beaming into creation's 56-year mission tour to Las Vegas. This is Trexone's 2022 Vegas or Bus Tour. On this edition, Picard's production designer, Dave Blass. This is a Trexone Conversation. Welcome back to a Trek Zone Conversation. Matt Miller with you in Trek Zone Studio 4. We are continuing Vegas or Bust coverage via remote. Joining me today is Mr. Dave Blass. Dave, I'm very excited to be chatting with you. Thanks for a little bit of your time. Thank you so much for having me. It's uh, exciting to be here and it's exciting to be surrounded by so many fans and uh, it's just the energy here is amazing. Now you are a fan yourself and now working uh, on Star Trek, you are the production designer for Picard, season two and season three coming up. Uh, what's it like to, to take that leap uh, onto onto the set? It's, it's horrifying, I and mean, everyone thinks, oh my God, it must be so much, so great. And it's like, there's uh, one thing, the worst thing is to uh, try to achieve your dream and fail. The next worst thing is to achieve your dream, get there, and screw it up for every other fan. Uh, so every day you go into work fighting the good fight, uh, hoping that what you do uh, is right, and knowing fully well that at some point someone's going to cry that you didn't put carpet on the floor. Uh, so it's, a, uh, you know, you, you do the best job you can every single day, you know, you fight the good fight, you, you go in and, and you do battle with it, and that literally is it. what it is, is, you know, you're, you're fighting every day to, to, with, to do a show and you know, with COVID and all the other things going on and, you know, the insanity that, you know, every day you're like, oh, we have the schedule, this guy's out with COVID, you can't do this, they change his schedule, we have two actors, they move the set up, and then you have to be the guy, the nerd in the group that raises his hand to go, okay, uh, it takes more than 24, uh, you know, four hours to go from Vulcan to Earth and the speed at which the thing and the warp and, and everyone's looking at you like, oh, dude, shut up, just shut up. Uh, but, you, you know, you got to fight that good fight and every every single day. Uh, but, it, you know, as a fan, it, it's wonderful because, I, you know, I sit there and I tell people the story. It's like I remember having this horrible day and I'm getting yelled and they're like, we need you to come to set and, and, you know, the director's like freaking out about this and they're like, what? And they're like, oh, we need you to explain the warp core to the actors and everything. And I'm like, yes, my worst day is everyone else's best day. Like, I am working on Star Trek having to go to set to explain warp, warp dynamics to the actors and... Uh, you know, Patrick Stewart's calling me to set to ask a question. I'm like, yes, I'm, I live a horrible life. Um, so it, it's, it's a great thing, and, and you know, you, but you do have to channel those moments and, and, and really, uh, and I think Terry Mentalis has said it a couple times, that, that as a fan, you, you get so caught up in the getting the job done and doing everything that you forget <laughs> that you are what you're doing. And there's been so many, a couple moments where, uh, you know, one of them being when Patrick uh, is giving his speech at Starfleet Academy, and I was there, and I was running off to do something. I was late for a meeting, and I just, and he just, he was doing his, his speech, and I just stopped, because I am literally dead center in the stage. He's 40 feet away in his uniform, dressed as Jean-Luc Picard at, and I have to just stop and go, I am at Starfleet Academy watching Jean-Luc Picard give a speech. Oh my God, I, you know, dream achieved sit down and I just sat there and watched it. I was like almost in tears what, get, saying, you know, I'm getting to watch this moment. Meanwhile, everyone else is running around going, oh, whatever. And they, they, they didn't even really care. Um, so it, it was such a fun experience. Watching Star Trek uh, in the 80s and the 90s, um, to, to have yourself there in, in 2021, uh, standing on the set of Starfleet Academy, uh, as you say, dream realized. Um, what, I guess, what What's a highlight for you? Out of out of everything, what's probably one of the biggest moments for you on set? Um, it was probably the, the, the first day that, that Patrick saw the, the Stargazer and uh, and what was able to walk him through that and, and seeing the, the the reaction to that and having him walk into... I mean, there was a lot of reaction from, from Patrick because, again, not only is he an icon as an actor, but as Jean-Luc Picard, but he's just... He's a very, uh, you're, you're standing in his presence and it's not, it's a known thing. It's like, oh my God, that's Patrick Stewart. It, right? Just to walk him through the, the chateau and, and, and share all the different little uh, Easter eggs and things in it. And so that everyone under, you know, and he was excited, but just to walk him onto the stargazer and to, and to show him that, it was just like, wow. Uh, but yeah, there, there's just so many of those of those moment, moments and, and 
But I would, I would say, as far as like mind blowing moments, uh, the end of season two, uh, there's a scene with uh, with the card in queue in the solarium, and I was four feet away from John DeLance and he's sitting there rehearsing with Patrick Stewart and rehearsing, not shooting, so they're just figuring out what the scene is and how, where they stand and it's like, and they were both sitting and then John got up and he's like hovering over Patrick and he's like, I, Patrick, I, I want to take your, your, your face in, in my hands. Is, is that a, and literally I'm almost tearing up because I'm just like watching these two actors and, and it was so powerful and he's like yeah, watching the, but it wasn't even just watching the scene but it was watching the process of them acting and but it's just to be like sitting there seeing that moment I was like oh my god I can't believe I'm here and and then and then you walk out of there and you walk back into some crazy meeting about stunts and the, but it's just to sit there and have that one moment and uh, and, and see that happen it was just phenomenal and um, but there's you know so many of the, those those great moments but I think those two things just seeing the, the actors go through those those moments now Dave you know you brought in super fan coming in production design uh, working on the stargazer getting all those things you mentioned the carpet controversy uh, some of the controversy that came out from season two did you expect uh, some of those things that uh, the people were complaining about uh, I expected some controversy but the carpet stuff I was like really um, you know, and, and this the 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 reality of that is every as I said, every day is a battle fighting scheduling times and things and different aesthetic design aesthetics and and that was just a ne not a battle that I was ever gonna in any way win. Uh, so it wasn't even when I fought him. Like you know, the the cinematographers they want black, shiny, you know, glossy floors to get reflections and this and that, and you know the color of the walls, all this stuff. So that's the whole idea of like you know, he, he, like the amount of gloss that we had to add to the floor to get to them happy. If I had said, oh, we're gonna have carpet on the floor, it just and, and it wouldn't even like just from a, from a. Uh, design aesthetic it's that's very 1980s type of thing I would have gotten more of like a textured you know like a space diamond plate if, if you will uh, or something with a little bit more of a, of a tactical uh, thing because you're on you're, you are even though it's a high-end ship it would be something that would be more military like and more you know that you, you to keep people from slipping and running around and carpet is not necessarily great for that because you know if, if as anyone knows it's like it's carpet if you got the wrong footwear or whatever it's fairly easy to slip on uh, and it's but it was like th that is very much in uh, the, a design idea of the 19 uh, eight, you know 1986 when the Enterprise D and, and when it was designed if even if even to the extent of, if you look at the Enterprise A they didn't uh, they had more of a textured material in, in the, even the, the motion picture that wasn't carpet so but I'm like, when all of a sudden it became like a thing, I was like, oh, that. And then it became a huge thing. I'm like, really? And they're like, I can't believe you didn't do that. I'm like, my dude, it just wasn't going to happen. So it's like, especially you're looking at the glossy hallway and people are like, oh my God, it's so shiny. You're going to slip. And, uh, but luckily, Mike Okuda came to my rescue with a photo of his wife walking down like a glossy hallway and going, oh my God, not a slip in sight. And uh, so, but uh, you know, a lot of the controversy with a lot of people uh, upset about or about the uh, Stargazer not having an A uh, next to it and all, some of that stuff I you know was, was preempted I knew it was coming or you know the the view screen versus a window one I knew was gonna be a thing uh, so I knew that some of the stuff was coming but you know like I said the carpet one just caught me I'm like okay I didn't realize and you know but uh, yeah it's a uh, it, you know, you never know what, what people are going to get up excited about. Or, or uh, but it's like I said. I, on the flip side, no one ever in the history of ever has ever asked me about the Borg ship. And I'm like, how do you guys like? We created this cool new thing, and I'm like, no one like, oh, it's, he heard it. no one's talked about it. I'm like, that's so weird to me. I'm like, you would think that uh, it's not a cube. And I'm like, I'm like, yes, yeah, it's not a cube, and here's why. And and, and uh, but yeah, they they, uh, they really wanted to talk about the carpet. So. Uh, which is uh, which is interesting. Funny because my next question is about the Borg ship. Um, to be designing new elements for Star Trek, Dave, uh, to to be adding your flair uh, to the universe, uh, must must be another one of those dream come true. It's it's a bit of a cliche, but but I guess it's there, and, and you're geeking out with all these things that you can add to the universe. 
Well, I, you know, it's funny. With uh, one of the first things I did was I reached out to Herman Zimmerman, um, and I said, "Hey, I just want to know. Uh, I'm designing the show. Huge fan, and I um, and I'm going to be designing. But I just want you to let you know, whatever I do is designed to carry on from what you did and not redesign things and not re thing. I'm like, I'm going to do the next evolution of what you had done. So just you know, it's going. I'm coming from a place of respect. So like the board ship, it was like the first directive was it, it, it wants to look like nothing we've ever seen before. So clearly, then you know, with that directive, I'm not going to show them cues. So then we came up with the ideas of what could it be and this and that and um, and whether it was like the final end all be all of the answer. The idea we were talking about assimilation and how that worked. And the idea that you know, what if they assimilated the Borg, assimilated not just people but things and whatever. And it was the idea that if you wanted the baddest Borg ship ever, what if the Borg assimilated the the Doomsday Machine? And you know because because we know that you know from the episode that there were more of them floating around. And that, that's one of the last lines. What if there's more of these floating around? And you're like, but well, wouldn't that be so cool if like they did that? They assimilated. They had that weapon as a core of the ship, and then grew from it and then it became like the idea of a frill, frilled dragon so that this thing you know when it came up and it went and it, you know we're like oh my god that's that's the biggest baddest thing and then in the end it you know it, it became that thing it's like oh okay this is the nice ship these are the nice board and you're like so it really isn't a big bad horrible ship it's it's you know nice borgati board um so yeah it was, it was kind of a, a fun thing at the end but um and then a lot of people said that it looks like a vagina, and I'm like, okay, I'm like, not not part of the design, but yes, I can see that now that you mention it, and she is the queen, so uh, there you go. Um, so that it was that was an interesting uh, comment, but uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun. But it was for me, um, for me, what it, what what it was, and I and it goes back to a lot of my decisions, which was when I took over, I said. Uh, I want to hire the best people to design the show, and the best people to design the show are the people who have had the experience designing a Star Trek starship, not a Star Wars starship. So I said, you know, I want to get the band back together, and reaching out to John Eves and Doug Drexler, Mike Okuda, uh, you know, and, and you know Jim Martin, a lot, all these guys. That was my goal. So it's like, you know, and, and Terry uh, had already tweeted something about, it, so I can say about season three that uh, Worf has a new weapon. And I'm like, when the prop guy started working and drawing something, I said, just call Dan Curry. I mean, he designed, you know, all the classic, you know, weapons. Why wouldn't you? I mean, it's, 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 that's, it's an easy ball to hit, you know. You call Dan, Dan designs a weapon, he works with Michael, they figure out how to use it, and, and then you, you get credit for it. Rather than you design something, Michael hates the weapon, and the fans go, why didn't you call Dan Curry? And I'm like, let's just start with, let's start with Dan. And then Dan was all excited to be back. He designed it, it's brilliant. He, you know, got on the phone with Michael. They were like working out the logistics of how you would use it. And, it, it's, and it's like, okay, the dream come true, you know. Yeah. But just to have those people and to, and to be able to reach out to them and say, hey, we want to do this. It's like reaching out to Rick, Rick Sternbach and say, hey, Rick, I have this design that you did for something. Uh, you never used it, but I'd like to use it in, the, in season three. And, and, you know, is that okay? It's like, oh, yeah, that's great. But I'm like, uh, by the way, come by so I, you can sign some stuff for me. And uh, it was, uh, <laughs> you know, it was, and, and we used uh, some of his artwork uh, in Picard's uh, library. And, you know, so again, that was our thing is to honor the past. It was like, it, you know, we're not going to bury ourselves in the past. We're going to say when we're doing Picard Chateau that this is history. This is the history of the Picard family. And why not put in things that you saw in the past episodes? And why not do this? Because that's what all of our homes have. They, you have elements of things that have been in your family history for, for decades. And, you know, let's find the things that we've seen before and, and remake them or, or, you know, source them and, and go from there. An incredible season uh, to certainly behold, uh, Dave, an incredible one to add into this legacy as we bid farewell to Picard. We have one more season with the band and the whole band is getting back together. We have that teaser. Is there anything you can tell us about season three? Um, yes, uh, there's tons of stuff. Let me give you all the spoilers right now. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> yes, I can't... Yes, yeah, exclusive. Unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately, no. Um, but what I can say is I get a, I've been asked a lot uh, because uh, season two had the time travel elements and, and that uh, season three will feature more starships 
than seasons one and two combined. There will be more new ships. There will be new, you know, and, and you will see some old favorites. Uh, so it, it is starship porn in a, in a season. And um, I think what Terry has done is exactly coming from a fan. It's like if you if you literally gave a huge fan uh, the opportunity to make uh, a season of Star Trek, that's what he's done. And he's kind of coming at it from a fan standpoint, saying, "I don't want. What would I, as a fan, want to see? And what what would the adventure I'd like to go?" on and that's what he's done so uh, and, and I think that he's pushed the limits of what you can do in a, in a TV series in 10 episodes and, and done a phenomenal job doing that um, I would like I said I've seen uh, most of the shows and there there's episodes that are just like damn that was that was a movie uh, the, the, the sound the, the, the new score the, uh, the the visual effects are just just awe-inspiring so it's like you know you're like wow this is this is something so you know I know that uh, the, I being online a lot, uh, I get a lot of uh, I get a lot of both sides. I get a lot of people who love the show and it means a lot to them, and I, a lot of people who don't like the show. And I say, well, you know, we're going to continue to do the best job we can, and we did, and we learned a lot from things. And I think that uh, when you're doing a show like Star Trek: The Next Generation, and you have 26 episodes in, in the first season to learn and to figure out things and, and, and whatever, people don't realize it's like, yeah, that's a lot of time to learn. There's a lot of episodes in season one that aren't great and but they're good I mean they're like oh, okay but but there's this ones that aren't as memorable and whatever but it's a big difference when you all of a sudden you have 10 episodes to do and you, and then you're getting it back together and then so I think that in season three we uh, the the show really hits its stride everyone uh, is coming together there's so much love on the cast and crew and everyone doing it that uh, and it comes out in the show and everyone brought their a games and it's like but just getting to be on the set with you know Jonathan Frakes and and I as I said you know I had met uh, when they came in for a rehearsal or something, uh, Michael Dorn, but, uh, you know, it's got so much different meeting, meeting Michael Dorn and then I'll walk on the set and go, oh my God, that's Worf. And because, you know, in full makeup and they did this and it's just, it's like, uh, he's phenomenal and it's just, uh, and everyone is, uh, you know, is great, Jerry Ryan and Michelle. And, um, so it's just, it's just an honor to be there and, and to watch it all come about and I think the fans are going to love it. So, but as far as the ships go, yeah, there's a lot of ships, a lot of ships. Looking forward to Picard Season 3. Dave Bless, thank you so much for your time, and uh, thanks for having a Trek Zone Conversation live from Vegas. Thank you.